Hey folks, this is the Nutty Knife Guy, and today I'm bringing you my second video where I actually do some testing on a knife, specifically the Gilhaven. Here comes those air quotes again, folks. Practical assault knife. Uh, this is a beautiful knife. I love the knife, but it's not tactical. I mean, look, it's bright, shiny, it's pretty. It's designed to be a display knife, more or less, but it is a very sturdy knife that can be used for what it is intended for, a fighting knife. Now, I'm just going to tell you some testing before I go to that footage and cut that in. I am attempting to teach myself to edit. This is really the first time I'm going to edit anything, so bear with me. Now, I didn't edit out a lot of my uh, bows and paws there, but... I just kind of split it in because you didn't want to spend 15 minutes watching me hang up targets and things like that. Also, there is a part in the video that I'm not going to add out because it would be too much of a pain. Where for a second there, I thought I nicked myself when I was swinging the knife over. Uh, fear not, that did not happen. I do get uh, these really thick patches of calluses and dry skin that occasionally crack open. I'm sure you people out there have had this open before. And while I was swinging, one popped open. And it got a little trickle of blood that had me worried for a minute. But honestly, this thing is like really, really sharp. It came really, really sharp out of the box. And it wouldn't have been a nick the way I was swinging. You would have probably seen me dialing 911 with blood covered fingers and blood dripping over the camera had I actually tagged myself with this knife. But having said that, I'm kind of stupid for doing that. Finish testing line of blade, but it's just kind of necessary for testing the knife. Now, this is a fighting knife, so that's how I tested it. And the thing about what the tests you're going to see. The first one is I have a piece of a wooden fence post that I've hung from a clothesline post. I call that the collective assembly of my war post. Now, usually I train with that with training weapons. I practice on that post. This time I went live blade. Don't try that at home. I'm being stupid for you. Uh, and but it, and uh, one of the things you're going to see that I'm not swinging for the fences when I'm doing this. I don't think it's necessary. If your pick, point is sharp and your edge is sharp, use the edge for you. You don't have to Captain Caveman swing on every uh, on every swing on every on every cut. Uh, it will do nicely. Just a decent bit of motion, not really, not a whole lot of strength at all. Will do the job nicely, and you don't have to worry about the massive, re, uh, massive recovery if you miss, or even if you don't miss. If you make this cut and you have too much power behind it, you can't reverse your angle to defend yourself or go in with another technique if you swing too hard. So. I may not seem like I'm swinging hard, but I'm swinging hard enough. You'll see close-ups of the way that thing was chewing up my war post. Uh, we're talking about wood, not hardwood, but wood. And what I was doing was going half an inch into that wood. Now imagine what that would do to skin. Okay. Enough about that. The second test was surprising, and you'll see why. What I did is I took a two-liter two liter bottle, filled it with water, and put it in one of those Walmart shopping bags with the idea of seeing if I could slash through the fabric of those cloth Walmart shopping bags and do damage to the bottle. That was a surprising result. You'll have to watch the video to see it. But my thinking about that was that when you're fighting with a knife, you're unlikely going to be fighting a naked opponent. I suppose you might be fighting some naked meth head who completely freaked out and decided you were like a naked ninja zombie from Mars and was trying to eat him and attacked you with no clothes on. But in actuality, you will probably be facing somebody with clothes. So that was the idea of the simulation. I know it's not a scientific test. You don't have to tell me this is not a scientific test. But it'll give you an idea. And the results were very surprising in that test. But having said that, the Gilhaven Tactical Assault Knife 
I'm not going to go through the specs. You can open up on look, look those up online if you want one. Very good knife. Fit and finish perfect. Uh, if you want to go on my uh, knife nerd channel, I did a few uh, desktop review on this. The thing of it is, I did bash this up against a, a wood block. Eight angles of attack. One asterisk from hell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I also did that with the press twice, and then I did a little freestyle. I look like an idiot. I know. My I wasn't the most graceful creature before I down the, uh, fell down the steps and ruined my knee. Now I'm even less so. But hey, I got. I'm doing the videos, so take them or leave them. I will be changing the the angle on the camera the next time I do this because there's a couple of things where you're just getting a big shot of my fat ass, and I know you don't want to see that. But anyway, uh, crude video shot with crude equipment. I will improve. I will learn from my mistakes and get better and get better equipment as money allows. But here it goes. My humble testing of the Gil Hibben Tactical Assault. Now, uh, I will be repeating this test because it was surprising. I will be repeating that test within a week or so, uh, weather permitting, with this MPEC fighting knife because it's a very similar size and weight, but it has this recurve. And I want to see if the recurve really affects that particular test. So, uh, before I forget to ask you and to plead with you and plead with you again, like, subscribe, comment, share, I'm trying to grow the channel, such as it is, and of course I would like your help with that. And off we go outside so you can see me swing around a knife like a nutty knife guy should. All right, I don't know how exactly how this is going to work, but we'll give it a shot. Eight angles of attack with the Gil Hibben tactical assault knife, fighting knife. Slammed it in there. Different angles of attack. Now it's moving. Of course, I want it that way. I want a little movement. Helps me get better. Uh, no edge roll. And when I'm done here, I'll take the camera over here and see if you can see a couple of really deep gouges that this thing made. No edge damage. And no scratches even. Okay, let's do eight angles of attack with the thrust. Okay, target should be all right for the rest of this. I don't know how I'm seeing this, but uh, it's already went in point, point's still holding up. Give it a couple of more whacks, and if the target doesn't fall down again, I'll just go a little freestyle. You can see this is biting in pretty good. I'm going to have to wedge it out a little bit. And we'll see how long that's before the target falls. And 
that target is still up, but not so much a scratch on the blade. And of course, bobbing back and forth is a good thing, especially on the thrust. Makes you a bit more accurate on your blade work. All right, back in a minute. Okay, what I've got in there is a two liter bottle of water in one of those Walmart cloth uh, grocery bags. And it's not a scientific test, I realize this. But it should give you an idea of how this thing will slice through cloth and what kind of wound it will leave if it does. Since if you are forced to defend yourself with this knife or any knife, it should be capable of getting through clothing and leaving a decent wound. In personal protection, self-defense, whatever you want to call it, I'm not advocating going out and using a knife on anyone who isn't trying to hurt or kill you. So here we go. Okay, that was an epic fail probably on my part because I didn't get through the bottle at all. Let's try that again. This actually surprises me. Okay, I'm getting through the cloth no problem, but I'm not denting that bottle at all. Well, without the cloth protecting it, I sliced right through. But both times I tried with the cloth in front of it, it didn't go through it. I'm not sure that that's an indictment on the knife, though. We'll talk about more about that later. Okay, guys, my stand is shaking here a little bit. It'll calm down. So, uh, I realized that I look like a you know big fat double art out there jumping around, but I gave up caring what other people think about me a long time ago, especially about my size. Uh, I'm fat. I know it. I own it. Uh, okay. But this was an interesting test, and it kind of surprised me. I thought I would at least get a little bit through on the cloth. Now, I had, I ripped it out a little bit so I could get the bottle in there and fold it up so I could slash the... Uh, oop, I really hit my stand on that one. Okay. Uh, I kind of ripped it out a little bit so I could use it as a holder so I could get a piece of the bottle out there without any cloth on it to test slashing yet. But you saw me cutting it, and you can see I got good... You can see where the, my ripping, where the cut end and the ripping began here. Right? I got good clean cuts right here. 
on the cloth. And I did, now that I'm looking at it, I did scratch the bottle right here, but it didn't go cleanly through. And there's a place where I dented it on another swing, but and got through the cloth, but didn't get through the bottle. Now, I, when I got that clear space of the bottle that didn't have any cloth protecting it, I went away and it went almost straight through the bottle, even though the bottle had was swinging and giving, and I probably didn't get the uh, maximum out of that uh, maximum out of that swing. But in a personal protection situation with a knife, it's not going to be holding still. You know, your your opponent's not going to be holding still. So I think that's pretty valid. Now this would have been a devastating wound on unpro if it was unprotected, but no, almost no wound at all, little or no wound at all, protected by just a little bit of cloth. Now these things are supposed are you know supposed to hold some groceries, so they're they're fairly they're fairly uh, strong but i was really surprised that i didn't get any uh uh penetration into that bottle at all with a, with a uh, slash now i'm sure a, a thrust would have gone through there that's given and that knife is really optimized for the thrust um i have some knives down there with recurves that are designed for the slash and i will repeat this test on those uh, from a different angle camera angle I was looking at it and I'm sure you guys don't want like close-ups on my ass anymore uh, but live and learn this is the first time I've done this kind of thing for a YouTube video uh, but uh, I think uh, that's really an interesting result on the uh, on the cloth test uh, because you know that's a probably a fair simulation of a, a decent quality t-shirt or something like that, and the slash was completely ineffective. Like I said, not scientific, but it's something to think about if you're using a, a blade for personal protection in any way. Right? Because if it didn't get through that, I, I doubt seriously would have got say through a thick, uh, thick sweatshirt. And if you use a, uh, if you use a knife as a retention tool for your firearm, and you're struggling for your firearm, and you try to slash across the arms. Going by this, very unscientific, I understand, but going by this, you probably won't slash through that sweatshirt. You won't get through it. Something to think about. Anyway, thanks for enduring my amateurish uh, video making. This is the Nutty Knife Guy, reminding you to draw your knives only in just purpose and sheathe them only with honor, and to remember. That without knives, life would be dull and pointless. I bid you goodbye.